Okay, it has been a long time since I've done one of these kind of just sit down and update videos where I fill you guys in on what's new with me and my life, especially in regards to photography. So today, that's what we're gonna do. These kind of videos don't typically do very well in terms of views, but there is still, I think, the core audience, I guess, for this channel that always watches and engages with videos like this. And I like being able to just sit and, you know, have some time to talk to you guys and fill you in and, uh, you know, it's just a little bit more personal that way. So I am gonna put topics that I'm gonna be going over over here on the side of the screen. So maybe if you just wanna skip ahead to the topic when it's highlighted, you can do that. I'll even put timestamps in the description. So if you wanna skip ahead, you can do so. But if not, if you wanna watch the whole thing, grab a cup of coffee and let's dig in. I guess the first thing we can talk about is my health and my recovery. For those of you who aren't aware, I suffered from a tick-borne illness known as ehrlichiosis last July. And there's a whole video that goes in depth with that and everything that happened, and I'll put a card up at the top of the screen, but uh, my recovery has dramatically improved just in the last month. Um, back in the fall, I actually left my original physical therapist that I was seeing and started going to our chiropractor, Joe Spalding, here in Chillicothe at Spalding Chiropractic. And our family had been going to Spalding for years, and I was originally doing physical therapy, with um, a, a, a branch of the hospital, and I just didn't feel like I was getting enough physical therapy, and I didn't feel like they were pushing me enough. And I understand from their point of view, liability, that sort of thing, they were just very cautious about what they were having me do and how hard they would actually push me. And I just felt like I wasn't getting enough. So I started seeing uh, Joe Spalding, and that's when things dramatically changed. Um, just after maybe three or four sessions with him, I saw more improvement there than I did in a couple of months um, with my previous physical therapist. So I started working with him twice a week, and I'm still seeing him. I actually had physical therapy this morning. And uh, it was in the first week of January that I regained the mobility in my left arm. And nurses and doctors and physical therapists, they'd all told me, you know, with nerves, it could just all of a sudden one day when you wake up, it could be better. And I kind of just took that as them like giving me hope, you know what I mean? Like just trying to help me keep my head up. Like, you know, you never know, it could happen any time now. But I went six months without being able to lift my left arm higher than like here. And uh, that does a lot to a person. Um, you know, I've always had like high spirits with everything, but that really made a difference. Uh, it wasn't until I regained the mobility that I realized how big of a difference it made, but um, we were at physical therapy one day and something just kind of started going and uh, Joe, he noticed that and he brought me over to this rig and he was like, grab that pull-up bar. And sure enough, I reached my arm up and I could do it. And that just floored me because I wasn't able to do that for six months. And uh, my right hand as well is night and day different from where it was. Um, you know, I, like I said, I'm still doing physical therapy because it still needs to improve. I lost a lot of weight, a lot of muscle, and I'm just trying to get my strength back now, but the mobility and being able to work more on strength is just huge. Um, and it's translated in all aspects of my life after getting that mobility back and feeling a lot more able to do a lot of things and just feeling more like myself again. Um, it's just, it really changed a lot for me. I think for the last couple of years, my like regular schedule would be, you know, two to three videos a month here on YouTube. And that fluctuated in different times. Sometimes it was a couple more, sometimes it was less. Um, I obviously took a little hiatus while I was in the hospital and, you know, at the beginning of my recovery. But this year, I mean, this will be the eighth video that goes up on YouTube and it's February 2nd. So I really just have this very refreshed and rejuvenated kind of point of view, not even just on YouTube, but on photography, on family. Like there's just, I feel like I have a new lease on life. And I didn't realize how much that was affecting me mentally with, uh, you know, just being limited in my mobility and not being able to do the things I've always done and uh, just regaining that. It really has given me a sort of a new perspective and uh, I've 
I've been really, really happy this year. So with my regained mobility and, you know, continuing to get my strength back, I am going to be able to get back to working in the cemeteries uh, this spring once the weather turns. So I'm very excited about that and very thankful because uh, losing that job for six months was a very big effect on our family, uh, income wise, you know. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that and very thankful. Um, but I am still going to be pushing the YouTube channel as much as I possibly can and, you know, continuing to do as many videos as I can because I really am enjoying this. And uh, a large part of being able to spend the time is thanks to the people on Patreon. And I don't want this to be like an infomercial or me trying to convince you guys to pledge on Patreon or anything because unless you are financially stable and comfortable enough to do that, I do not want you to pledge because I understand completely, my family and I understand completely what it's like to make sure every single dollar counts that you have that month. So I totally get that. With that said, I am extremely thankful for everybody on Patreon who has decided with their money to support this channel and what I'm doing because even for those of you who aren't, the fact that people are pledging, that's just allowing me to spend more time focusing on that, and that benefits everybody. Like I said, there were eight videos that came out in January. I don't know that I've ever had that many videos in one month, so huge thanks to everybody on Patreon. Uh, we just had our first Patreon exclusive live stream, and that was a ton of fun. So uh, if you guys are pledged on Patreon and you didn't have a chance to jump in on the live stream, it is still available to you know be played back through Patreon. The link is there if you're at that tier. So uh, that's all I'll say about Patreon. But again, to everyone there, I cannot thank you enough. We really, really appreciate the support. And again, that feeling of just rejuvenation and feeling like I have a new lease on life, that's translated a lot even into photography because for a while, um, you know, I was, aside from just working differently with different cameras and how I was shooting in terms of like physically how I was shooting and using cameras and things like that, um, I just didn't really know what I wanted to do with my photography. I didn't really know exactly where my voice was or where it was heading because it's changed a lot over the years, which is a good thing. I welcome change and I try not to force things if I'm not really feeling inspired uh, shooting a certain kind of subject or anything. I try not to force it. I just try to let myself approach things that I'm genuinely interested in shooting. But uh, I went through a period where I just wasn't sure and it was just kind of a lot of waiting. I mean, I still continued to take photos of you know my daily life as I always do, but I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to do. And I think for me, one project that I kind of got started on after my dad passed away and then it kind of got put on the back burner because of life happening. There were a lot of things going on with my mom and things like that. And um, just mentally, I don't think I've had a time in the last couple of years where I've really felt like I know exactly where I want to be heading and what I want to be doing with my photography and voice. So I do want to continue to uh, pick that project back up because now I feel like I have a little bit more clarity on the subject, but at the same time, I want to do some new things this year. And I have a couple ideas, but again, I'm not trying to force things, but really just observing photography and studying other photographers and seeing even just friends of mine that are making great work and just sharing it on Instagram. Even that, I've really been just trying to spend more time observing that and giving it more of an, uh, an actual, you know, sit down and, and spend time with the work and just studying. And uh, it feels really good to be back at a point like that. Which brings me to a video that I did recently that I wanted to make a quick little comment about. And that's the video I did with my friend Kevin O'Mara on the value of photo books. That kind of video is something I have wanted to do for a long time. Not just on that topic, which that idea of me sitting down with Kevin and just picking his brain, that is something that I've wanted to do in a video format. Because he was on my podcast, The Shoot, um, a couple years ago, and that was a great conversation, and we talked about books then. But I really wanted to have, you know, being able to tell that story more with a video and in just several minutes rather than, you know, an hour long conversation back and forth. 
I really wanted to put that spotlight on Kevin and his knowledge. And that's the kind of stuff I would really love to do more of on this channel. And again, with Patreon and, you know, that kind of going into funding for the channel, that can allow me to do things like traveling to shoot films like that or uh, equipment that it might take to shoot films like that. But just that side of storytelling for me was an awesome experience. Uh, and it was just, I had never done anything like that completely by myself. And I really was happy with how that turned out. And I was honestly kind of nervous on how that would be received um, just because it's unlike anything else I've ever done on my channel and the response to it was amazing. Uh, in terms of like numbers wise, like how many views it got, it obviously doesn't compete with like a lens review or a camera review because that's what most people are searching for. But I think the value in that video weighs so much more than the attention it receives. And I was really, really happy to get that kind of response. So if you watched that video, and especially if you left a comment on it, thank you. Because that like just made every bit of time that I put into it completely worth it. Just knowing that people got something positive and got some inspiration out of it. That was amazing. So I do want to make more videos like that. I have a few people in mind that I'm going to reach out to that are somewhat around the area, you know, within Ohio at least. Um, but I really want to try and, and broaden that and shoot more projects like that this year. Another thing I want to do more of on the channel is just shooting different film stocks and different cameras and doing more kind of photo walks where I just take you guys along with me because it's a lot of fun to do that. Um, for me, I think, you know, I love shooting film. I have always loved shooting film. It's how I got started in photography, but uh, just over the years, like I, I stick to what I know. So I would always just be shooting HP5, pushing it to 1600 and shooting with my M6 and a 35 millimeter lens. And like, I, I've bounced around to different cameras and stuff, but there's so many different film stocks out there that I've either one, never even tried, or two, I've only shot a roll or two here and there. And I feel like I've started to miss just that fun spontaneity of film photography and the variety that it has because that's really what I loved about it for so long was just I had all these options and it was all fun and new. And then when you shoot the same film stock for years and years and years, it's great to have a consistent look and to know what the results are going to be every single time. But uh, it's still fun to just try out a different film stock and, you know, be surprised. I think there can be this sort of overly romanticized idea of film photography and it's so raw and organic and, you know, there's like a lot of just kind of like fluff really where it's like people just, empty statements about film photography and make it out to be this magical thing. Uh, but I do think there is some truth in just the, uh, the variety there and the fun that it has. So I have a freezer or a fridge full of film uh, of all different film stocks, black and white, color negative, E6. I have all these different film stocks that I want to try out and just share my results. Uh, not really saying like this is the best film for this or this is how you should rate this film or this is how you have to shoot it to get the best results. I just want to do more, you know, trial and error and sharing my experiences and seeing what works and seeing what I like and just sharing that with you guys because I feel like you guys really enjoy that and I always get a good response from that. So definitely more videos like that are planned. And speaking of film and just how awesome it is, uh, I am going to California for the very first time in about a month. Uh, the kind folks at Beers and Cameras, run by Juan Martinez, uh, him and the Darkroom Lab, they are putting together this event called Film Paidea. This is basically a big celebration of film photography. It's the Film Photography Paidea, I think is the actual name, but this is the second annual one. And I have been invited to come out and speak and just talk about photography, talk about shooting film. Um, I am not the only speaker. There are a lot of other great speakers, uh, one of which is Grant Britton, who is a legendary skate photographer, still shoots black and white film to this day. But I've been a huge fan of Grant's for a long time, and we've talked over the years on Instagram quite a bit, but I've never had a chance to meet him in person. So I am very excited to meet him finally. I'm excited to make a portrait of him because I've always wanted to do that. So Grant will be there. Take, our friend here on YouTube, Big Head Taco. Take will be there as well. And he's another person I've known here on YouTube for years and I've always wanted to meet him. So I get to meet him. Uh, Mike Padua from Shoot Film Co. He used to sponsor the podcast. Uh, we've talked back and forth a lot over the last few years. 
he'll be there. Uh, Tim, Timothy Makeups, and uh, Chris from the Analog Talk podcast, they'll be there. Uh, King Japes here on YouTube, you guys know him. Uh, he'll be there. There's just a lot of people coming. Uh, Matt Marash and Michael Rosso from the Film Photography Podcast. Uh, someone from Ilford will be there, and as a lover of HP5, I'm excited to meet them as well. It's just, there's a lot of people coming together to celebrate film photography, and I couldn't be more excited about it. So I am going to put a link in the description if you guys want to buy tickets. It's March 2nd and 3rd in San Clemente, California, and the tickets are on sale now. Um, I don't know how many tickets there are, but they are selling tickets, so if you're interested and can make it, Definitely come hang out. Uh, I would love to meet some of you guys and shoot some photos of you and just hang out and celebrate film photography. So I'm going out there by myself for a few days. Uh, I'm a little nervous, but I'm really, really excited. But I think that is enough of the update for today. Um, I really appreciate the support. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope this answered some questions for you. Um, only thing I can say is that I'm excited. I'm excited for 2019 because uh, the year so far has been great. Uh, again, my recovery and everything has just, it's made a world of difference on my, uh, my mental health, my physical health. I've just, I've really, really been happy with how everything has been this year so far. And large part of that is your guys' support. Um, I've said it a million times, but I really do appreciate it. You guys have stuck with me through a lot of ups and downs with things that have gone on with our family, and uh, we really do appreciate that. So uh, if you guys can make it to the event next month, I hope to see some of you guys there. But uh, if not, that's okay. There's going to be a lot of stuff here on the YouTube channel coming up. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.